Hey, hey. Hey, man, I saw you last hey, night. Hey, you bro, walked by me, man. I didn't even notice. I know. I'm like. <laughs> the math, hey, you would never leave like $285 on the ground, would you, and just walk away from it? I thought I had it, man. <laughs> I, I ain't gonna lie. I thought it was in the pocket. A whole 285. A whole 285. Man. I was almost hurt, In man. college? 285? Now I'm still looking for it. Now I was almost hurting. I was almost hurt. <laughs> Coach Prater show love, though. So this man right here said, his claim to fame is he would have knocked me out if he'd have caught me on the field. I tried to. Anyway, they were telling us we were on the bus ride, and they were like, whatever you do, whenever the game's over, win, lose, or draw. Get on that bus. Get straight on the bus. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, shit, I'm, it's two years ago, so I'm a grown-ass man. I'm, I'm not getting on no hey, damn Channing, bus. Hey, you know what you can do? Do this in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. Limitless, take a stem and cap in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless, take a stem and cap in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Uh, way I'm feeling, got me up. Uh, on the mission, got me up. Uh, I mean, we're back again, bro, and I figured we'd class the joint up, right? And that's why we got Marvin Lewis on here, and we set him next to Channing, right? Because we needed to balance that off, Marvin. We needed to get somebody with some dang sense, right, and sit him in one of these seats and make it work. But, Coach, listen, uh, you coached in the league for a ton of time, uh, had a lot of success. What's the most fun, though, you ever had, Coach? I think, the, you know, obviously when you win the Super Bowl and when you see people do – things that people didn't think they could, they doubted them. Mm -hmm. And I think to me, that was the most fun. I mean, I, I, I tell people the story that, you know, I would always have a video on Saturday night. And that one uh, was uh, Gladiator. Mm -hmm. And literally the theme of that was Gladiator. Right. You know? And I had an article from the beginning of the season when this newspaper man in Baltimore talked about how we were underachieving, and, right. and this dude, this dude, this dude, and I remember reading him the article, and had to go later. And I remember walking out after the pregame meal to the buses, going to the stadium in Tampa, and Ray was sitting there watching that that, that movie mm -hmm. by himself. Again. Right. right. And you know, I mean, that's the thing. You know, the things that we did. Trent Dilfer, having been with the Bucks and win a Super Bowl in right. Tampa. Yeah. On ice, you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can't you can't make that up. You know, so guys like that. That's and I think, too, the, the way y'all want it, right? You being a defensive coach, like, don't nobody remember that Super Bowl because of Trent Dilfer? Like, and I get it. It was nice that he was on the team. But to excel at what y'all were doing, you know, especially being on a team that won a Super Bowl because of a defense, that had to be great, too. Well, it was, and because of those guys and how they, they all got there a different way. Mm -hmm. When we drafted Ray in 96, and then the next year, Peter Boulware and yeah. Sharper, you know, Darren Sharper goes to the Super Bowl. So those dudes always went to the Super Bowl with Darren. I'm like, man, y'all need to keep swinging off Darren all the time, man. Y'all <laughs> yeah. need to go learn. You know, you need to go suck the knowledge out of those players, you know, from Green Bay. How are they doing this? And, and they did that. You know, they took it on their own to do that. And, and coach, so that's at Baltimore. Then you get the, the, the big, you're the big man in Cincy. But that's the problem that I have. You know, you jump to Cincy. We got to talk about Baltimore's defense more, though. This is the best defense in NFL history. Yeah. I mean, it right? was. That, that, no, no, no. Oh, was, now you heard see, he's now a Pittsburgh you, still, you right? Heard so we families. already know his pushback. Yeah. I went through Pittsburgh, but, but I, I took something from everybody. <laughs> yeah, you did. Go <laughs> start his story in Pittsburgh. Linebacker, linebacker <laughs> yeah. in Pittsburgh. Yeah, he started, started in Pittsburgh. Idaho State in 81. Yes. Right? Idaho Man. State. So yeah. 40 years. Yeah. 40 years of coach. So it started at Idaho State. A linebackers coach in Pittsburgh, Steel yeah. Curtain, Baltimore, 2000 defense. I played against the Ravens defense. I know what they were about. Gosh, you're so old. You got two Hall of <laughs> you got two Hall of Famers from that defense, and Ray and Rob Woodson, amazing players. He's more a Pittsburgh Steeler though. Stop it, bro. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> you wave that damn towel, we're, don't you? We're, Goodness we're, gracious. The towel is something. The, those fans are crazy. That towel is, I know what he's talking about. I, I played You've against been there them. Too. Yep. But we I always tell there. people about the old AFC Central. You know, when you coach that defense, you yeah. the D coordinator there. You and Prior, Eddie George and Corey right. Dillon. Yeah. So, so yeah. You, you fall into, them, the bus. into my trap, right? So I'm setting this up perfectly. <laughs> because you're here. And they always talk about the Hall of Fame and if I should be in there or not. You've coached against all of us. Corey Dillon, Jerome Bettis, Eddie George, myself, a lot of backs. 
I need your top three. Oh, he and you don't have to put me in lie. it. Coach, because I'm in here. Hey, coach, he was, he been dribbling this ball up the court. Coach, oh, lie. yeah. Hey, waiting when, to throw when, him out of When I knew this was going to be an interview, right? <laughs> no, I, I would put you in it. There's no question about it. I, gotta I put, agree with that. I got to put Jerome in it, you know? Okay. Yep. I mean, uh, you know, when you think about it, I mean, you know, you guys made me have to change how we coach defense. 100%. You yeah. know? Yeah. And, and that's the thing that, that matters when you got to go stop somebody like that. Mm-hmm. And then when you put Keenan and Jimmy Smith outside, oh, yeah. <laughs> it made it more difficult. So did you lose a lot of sleep? Oh, yeah, I lost a lot of sleep. <laughs> and you had big, big Goose, Big hey, Sam. In fact, well, yeah, I mean, Brian said, uh, I'm tired of losing games 16, 15, wherever we lost to y'all yeah, in 2000. Right. And then the next game was 38, 35. I said, yeah, how you like that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the truth. So, that's from the from truth. a coach's standpoint, though, that, that's interesting because the X and O's of it is one thing. I throw you in there, Fred, because you, you, you want some love. So we'll give you some love. I'm going like, some love. A guy like Buss, Freddie T, Freddie T uh, Eddie George. Like, what do you tell your players when you're going against a guy like that? Because they're running a zone. They're running. They're running the power. They like we know what they're running. What do you tell your team that, to stop Freddie from hitting you for eighty? Well, you can't let him run downhill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, that was real, especially yeah. for him though. Yeah. You yeah. can't let him run downhill. We we got to let him make him go sideways. Yep. And I That's hate it going thing. sideways. Yeah. We got to we got to do a good job of gap control, mm-hmm. and we can't let him go downhill. We got to make him go sideways where we get a chance to to put a force on him all the time. And then when a dude start hitting you. Freddie, uh, uh, one of them dudes hit you for a hundred in the first half. <laughs> Something like that, coach. Like, that, is it coaching or d- d- hey guys, hit them lower, hit them higher? What do you well, what it, do you say when Freddie hits you for two hundred? It, it's probably you know, it's probably a combination of everything. I mean, it's probably <laughs> lack of tackling. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, a lack of getting them the right it's spots and everything. Yeah. It's it's everything. But you know when the you know, defense is played with 11 guys. You know, you guys know that, you know, you can't play defense. It ain't just a D-line. It ain't just a linebacker saying there. I mean, if DB's got to tackle, everybody got to do their job or else you're going to not be a very and good that And that was always my issue. You know, I, you look at the NFL and how things go, and you did 16 years in Cincinnati, correct? You know, and, and you can't control how, how the game turns out at the end of the day. You put in your package, you hope that everybody's prepared, mm-hmm. know they study, and they're going to come there and do their assignments and play. But this person could be out of his lane, his gap integrity, anything can happen. Missed tackle, turnovers, all that stuff adds up. But it always comes back to the head man. Oh, yeah. At the yeah. very end of the day. And I've always been That's a fan the job, of yours. That's and I've the always job. rooted for you, right? Even now, and this, with all these different coaching, uh, um, th- these jobs that are available. Well, I, I, you know, everybody knows I want to coach, you know. That's I mean, what I want to hear. When, when, when I was done with the 18th season, you know, there's a lot of things go through your head, what to do, you know. And I kind of did the little bit of the TV circuit and everything. And, and they said, well, he still wants to coach. So we're not going to really, we don't want to invest anything yeah, in him. because he knows he'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, but then you hear, you know, I had drivers, well, we're not sure how committed he is. I am, I mean, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now if I wasn't committed to doing. I just spent 15, 16 hours a day with our guys, you know, with AP and Antonio Pierce, uh, who I'm, you know, proud to have had opportunity to coach, right. but to see him do what he's doing right now and, and me to help him every way I can and coach Edwards every way I can. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And funny, yeah. funny thing you say, AP, he, he stopped me from fighting one day at the Super Bowl. AP's a good man. Yeah. I, about to, I was in a club and somebody tried me, coach, and I was about to, I was about to tear their ass up. Man. So you was going to win, though, for he, sure. He's and AP, 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 I'm a sensitive guy, coach, but I'm also 6'3", 250, so I know yeah, I, he I, I'm, wants I'm to on fight. top of a lot of that. So, yeah. so with that, too, coach, but... We, we brushed past Cincy, you know, to where? So I got to go back, Fred. You brought it back. I bring it back. Cole, what went wrong in Cincy? I don't, you know, what went wrong is you, you got to keep, you got you, you to gotta stay healthy. I mean, in, in 18, we're winning a division at Dubai. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally winning a division. I can't remember who we beat the, the game before. And I have a dinner for the captains on Monday night and their wives. And this dude, number 18, walks in with his boot on. <laughs> like, wait a second, yeah. right? What's yeah. going on? Yeah. And yeah. then the next week, that yeah. quarterback gets hurt. He breaks right. his bone in his, yeah. his hand. Yeah. And, and when you start losing players and you can't, you know, I always tell people when you lose that starting quarterback now, that field gets to be about 120. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, some of these quarterbacks make the field about 60, 70 yards. Yeah. yeah. Was that but your when you best lose team? your starter. That Coach, was your no, best team. Wait, people forget, no. though, the year 
Pittsburgh wins the Super Bowl, yeah. they don't win the AFC North. Well, we went in the playoffs three times without the quarterback. You know, or Carson went in that year, but twice in 15. Right. And then another time we went in without Andy. And, and that's, it's different. You know, you got to, and that's part of coaching. It's part of what you got to do. Right. Uh, that's one of the things I probably learned in 08 when Carson got hurt that I needed to adjust. Ryan Fitzpatrick was our starting quarterback. Right. I learned so much from that. Right. That we, we kept waiting that Carson was coming back. Carson was coming back. Well, no. We should have adjusted to Ryan because obviously Ryan can win games in Correct. national football. League. And he's still doing and it. And he's still, yeah, he's still playing. And, and that's the biggest thing about the NFL, especially today's NFL hell. Oh, Even in college yeah. with COVID and all yeah. this other stuff. Speaking of that, I don't know if he's one of your favorite players, Chad. Chad's supposed to be here. Chad's supposed to be here. Well, that's, there's, <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Chad, he, he, a little, he a little under the weather. He's probably yeah, at McDonald's. Yeah, he, he, right. He, oh, you know what? We got to ask him about that. We, we do. Chad. What he does, how he was. So we we definitely no. got a few things he, for you. He so first time I meet this dude, 85. I don't know, and this other dude with a ponytail. I don't know, you know. I mean, I coached against him. I'm sorry, I didn't know names. I knew numbers. Right. That's and what I knew right. about guys. Right, right. And uh, but I take him with me to this school to talk about. Uh, you know, we made a visit, uh, and and I'm like, hey, y'all ever do much? He said, no, nah, coach, we don't we don't do that. I go, why? Because we don't win enough. I said, well, we got to fix that. You right. Know? Yeah. And but he, they tell me their story. Man, man, y'all so lucky to get to the National Football League. Right. Telling their story from high school and through diff three different high schools and three and different Juco. colleges. And yeah. I mean, just yeah. Juco, 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 Oregon State right. for two months and you're in the NFL. Right. But he, football is all he had. Mm -hmm. Literally, I'd be working at night in my office and I could feel somebody in the door and I look up and it was Chad. You know, you know, he told everybody he was living in the stadium. He wasn't in the stadium, but he was there all the time. Right. He was right. right up the street. Right. You know, and he was there all the time. Him, he would, him and Carson, they would go over to Indy. If Indy had a Monday night game, and they would watch Peyton and them dudes warm up. Oh, wow. I mean, because that's how they were into it. Wow. You know, they were into it, and they wanted to be good. And, and, and that was a fun time for all of them. Right. And, uh, you know, and I was blessed to have them, you know. Uh, as player, and then you know now we got young Chad on the team, and the one thing Chad Johnson, you know, he could track the football man. That ball would go up, and he could track. And I see that from his son, and it's really cool to see. That's amazing. You know that how young Chad Jr. can track that ball and makes the and has great hands can catch the football. Now, he don't have all his other bad habits that daddy. <laughs> <laughs> bad, bad, there we go. Bad. I, I like you say bad, coach. I like you say bad. But, <laughs> but, but like, see, you would never miss a day. Right, and, right. And Junior, I said, hey, man, something missed between you and your daddy, right, you know, because right. he had a little tummy ache. You ever try to convince Chad to not go to McDonald's as much as he did? Oh, yeah. We tried to teach Chad how to do things <laughs> right, you know. But to his credit, you know, he, he, he did. He worked his tail. Football was his deal. And, yeah. You know, I tried to, you know, like, man, what are you thinking? Right. You can't do this. I mean, one day he was trying to tell me, you know, he showed me this. I said, man, you out your mind. Did he tell you he was changing his name before he did it? Uh... Yeah, I heard about it. <laughs> what, what was that conversation? What was that conversation? What was that's that, that, what was that conversation? Like, that's what you're what saying, you know what, know. Coach? I'm going to change my name to Ocho Cinco. <laughs> Legally. <I was> just <laughs> Legally. Because right. the well, league because didn't mess see, around then. Right. Well, yeah, see, the because that was the thing. Around. That's how it came up, because he was trying to get them to change the jersey, and they wouldn't change the jersey. Okay. And that was the thing, because properties then, you know, wouldn't change the jersey. Yeah. It was different then. than now. And so he had to legally do it, wait the year, and then go and do all that, and uh but the, the the thing that he most upset me with was the whole Hall of Fame jacket, and that went, <laughs> and, you know, that that upset me because right. to me that wasn't fair to the Hall of Famers. Correct. Right. Because right. I say you can get there, but but that's not how you do that. When you get that coat, you get that, you earn that coat, yeah, right. and so I could get that. You know, he he would. I mean, we'd be playing somebody, and he would. I mean, he would give him the business. Right. I mean, he did. He would go and compete and give people the business. Right. Coach, were you that there? Good. Were you there? Because I can't remember the year. When he killed Champ, yes, and Champ, that's when, yes. that's the first time I ever heard Champ oh, mad sure. or cuss or anything. Yes, and that's when Champ was like, "Nah, I'm the best mother effer in the world still." Yeah, but Chad went absolutely crazy. But, but and I and I have uh, his son has a picture of him catching the ball. Okay. on Champ because yeah. it was in the in my house in Cincinnati in in our workout room, you know. And uh, I mean, it, it's just. It, it was amazing because, you know, I had the pleasure of coaching Champ. So I knew how good Champ Bailey yeah, was. Right. You know, from the time Champ came out of Georgia, I knew about Champ. Champ was a dope coach. So you say the only one that got you was the Hall of Fame jacket. So him, him, him pulling out the money and trying to hand it to the ref. 
Oh, you, we, we know Ocho. Well, Ocho's the dude now. Proposing to the cheerleader. Proposing yeah. with the cheerleader. Like, not, I mean, like you, you as a head coach. That was you, off you the, the field. field. So he wasn't going to get in trouble. Right. But the thing before the game, that, that wasn't cool. And he got a little kid fired, you know, a little ball boy got fired for, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know me. <laughs> he, 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 he got, he got deny, some, deny. you know, 18 year old right. kid fired wow. off his job from the sideline for doing something crazy. But you had, you had to deal with Ocho Cinco and Terrell. Oh Owen. my gosh. At and, one time. At one time. And you know, <laughs> and I, we, we, let me back up. We, you were talking about Corey early. In 2003, I remember telling Corey Dillon in training camp, you are better than I knew you were. Yeah. And you were damn good. Very good. You were the last in Baltimore. You know, we didn't give up 100 yard rushing games. We went almost two years without giving up, and he had been the last one to get it. Right. And I said that to him. And T.O., same thing, man. Mm-hmm. I remember coaching against T.O. in 03. And then on Monday or Tuesday, I had to do a spot for NFL Network, and he was sitting in the studio like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> This dude just went for 200 on me, right, right. and uh, and he's sitting in the studio again to interview me, and I just like you know, and he he was he was really a good player, right. and Terrell was just m- so misunderstood all the time, mm-hmm. you know, and sometimes it was his own fault, his own doing, right. you know, but but that was the thing is is he I mean he could really play, I mean he had a month of October that year that he had 150 plus yards in like three or four games in a row. And then he broke his hand right. and, and that was the end. But yeah. uh, when you get a chance to coach against somebody, then he's on your squad and you get to watch him practice day in and day out. You're like, wow. How, how were Chad and, and, and Teal at practice? Like, they, did they, they, did they, like, cause they, they mesh well together. Yeah. Uh, you didn't, you don't see, you know, a lot of other receivers. They, I want the ball. I they want the ball. They, they, ha- yeah, they were competitive. They had naturally that's in They were naturally, but you never heard anything about this guy, you know, in the media saying, I don't get enough passes because no. he's getting the pass. They're best of friends. They now were, they today. Were, they were, they were friends. I mean, the Super Bowl was in Miami that year and I happened to go to some function. <laughs> and being in the back of the crowd, and them two went up on the stage yeah. and started, you know, tr- trying to sell this package. Correct. And uh, but you know, you, you get blessed to, to be around people like that. You know, to, to but be that's all energy though. Because I mean, training camp was sold out every day. It was yeah. it was ridiculous. To that part of coaching, because X and O is what you do. You say it's 16, 17 hours watching film and doing all that. Trying to adjust to those dudes' personalities. Speaking of T.O. and Chad, and just like even that, even now in college, everything you you coach, like how much do you put on top of do your job, run this route to trying to figure out a player's personality, trying to figure out how I can get this guy. Like, what's the breakdown in that? I had to be specific with Terrell. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that. I had to be specific. I mean, there was a time we it's lost the, the game. Like- we, we lost the game, we were winning the game, and Terrell didn't go inside on an end break and they intercept the ball. They end up getting the touchdown, go down, score, beat us. And we're like, what just happened? Mm-hmm. So after the game, you know, everybody's like, what just happened? So I had this bright idea on, on Wednesday, I'm gonna bring everybody in the locker room. We're gonna start the day in the locker room, just like we finished this last game, right? Mm-hmm. So I called Terrell in, now Terrell comes in Monday, we go through it, but I have the thing. Tuesday, he would come in and get a workout because, you know, he loves to work out. So uh, he's downstairs. I call him, come upstairs. He's like, are you going to cut me? I go, no, I'm not going to cut right. you. It was the day Randy Moss could cut. <laughs> oh, it make it feel that way. Listen, that's one of those things. Like when Peyton, that's when like, they let go of Peyton. I was like, shoot, anybody can get it. You know what I'm saying? They let go of Randy. you like, so, shoot, anybody can so, get it. So he's like, you going to I said, no, I'm not going to cut you. But come on, I want to talk to you about something. I said, so we're going to start the day just like we finished it. But we're going to start at 825 or whatever time was, a little bit, five minutes early, so that I don't hold, you know, we can get to the Wednesday installs. And I said, Terry, I want to start everybody in the locker room. And I knew every week he would, every, because I knew what time everybody got to work. He'd come in at 820. He would walk through. He would go in the locker room. He would get out of his stuff, put on his Bengal issue. He'd go in the dining area. He'd grab me a McMuffin or whatever he was going to get for breakfast. And he'd come in the team meeting. Well, I told everybody we was going to start a little early. Well, I go downstairs, they got everybody in there, the coaches and the receivers coach looking at me like, he ain't here. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So I go ahead, and when the time comes, I go ahead and start, and I look over my shoulder, and 30 seconds later, here he comes. Yeah, he come in the building. And, and, I, and, and, you know, and afterwards, you know, I went through my whole spiel and everything, and the receiver coach said, I'm sorry, man. He says, I, I go, I coach, don't worry. It's my fault. I forgot specific to tell Terrell that I wanted him there at 822, not right. that I was going to start early. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I learned a lesson. Yeah. You know, I learned a lesson, you know. Those lessons, you you know, you, you take and you – you know, you carry them to all the young men, you know, uh, here. You're working with a ASU, uh, Coach Edwards Herm. My, my thing is this. You know, the these kids, they need these foundations. You've seen everything. Been in the NFL all those years, uh, 16 in Cincinnati, six in Baltimore, and then yeah, Pittsburgh. Time, time one Pittsburgh, two. four, right? Yeah, four, yeah, four, four in Pittsburgh. So you have so, so, so much to give back to these kids on this level. Do they listen? <laughs> Do they listen? See, you, you hit on something right away, Fred. First thing we tell them is you are not the first person that's been through this. 100%. <laughs> there, we got six people in the room that's been through this can help you. So don't think you got to solve this on your own. And, and not an, I don't think enough of them listen long enough. You know, because it gets to be, I got to go, do no, no, we can help you do this. This is why, and right. so forth. And, and obviously, playing football at Arizona State, you have aspirations to move on to the National Football League. Right. And you should, or we shouldn't be recruiting you. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's part of the deal. That's what we want. And so we're there to help you. We're there to help prepare you how to study, how to meet, how to eat, how to sleep, how to go about doing everything to be a student athlete. It can't be set up any better than that. But the football part, we're going to make sure when you walk into an NFL team, it ain't going to be the first time you know how to take notes and things, a highlighter right? and, and, and be prepared how to eat and, and how to go to bed at night. You know, put, get, get off your device, go to bed. Is it way different in the sense that obviously when you're dealing with the grown men who understand this is how they feed their families, right? And there, there are strict rules and you can cut guys and find guys, but it's not that same dynamic. Yeah. In college, you know, you more you are teaching and you have to be kind of more accepting of the growing pains and the learning. Is that hard for you after being in the league for so long? Well, it's it, you have to learn patience. You really do, because, you know, the, the backgrounds that everybody comes from, which we know that once they get to the league, it's different. But it but it's even different. It's more different now because of their upbringing and so forth. Yeah. And you're trying to explain that to them. But the other thing, the analogy that I use is when you're in junior high school, everybody leaves high school, so they open up some seats. Mm -hmm. right. When you go to college, everybody leaves college or high school, goes to college, there's some more seats in that high right. school. In the NFL, everybody hold on to their seat. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. That's my seat. <laughs> yeah. Straight That's up. That's my seat. Yeah. You're yeah, not getting seat. this seat. Right. You know? But RC <laughs> said something, and I want to ask that where guys get in the league at 21, 22. Mm -hmm. They get to college at 17, 18. Yeah. That's not a big difference. Like, it, you, you've seen the 17-year-old kid, but 21 is four years off. Yeah, but it's maturity. Right. There's you can mature so good. much in that There's amount of time. There's a lot to be right. learned, man. I mean, I, you know, I was so, you know, obviously blessed with the dudes I had since then. One, I'm Whitworth still playing yeah. mm -hmm. for the Rams. Yeah. And I say, I want you to look around the room. See By the way, uh, Channing, Fred, it's an LSU guy. By the way, oldest starting left tackle Coach, to ever he got play. So much damn pride <laughs> in that raggedy he ass does. LSU. He like, he like see, I, I, I know we get it's it. It's football. It. He does. We, he does. <laughs> but, trying to make a point, guys. <laughs> trying to make a point. But, but Coach, that, that difference. Seeing yeah, a, a you freshman got, come in versus a rookie come yeah, in is a big difference. That's a huge difference. I mean, you got to tell them, look around the room, who's been here the longest. Mm -hmm. That's who you want to do everything like. Mm -hmm. That's how you want to train, to study, to eat. That's who you got to be with. So before we bring one of your players in, right, this is my question to you. I, I've been saving this, saving this, saving this. Hugh Jackson, Grambling State. Yeah. You're involved on a level where you got all of the resources. You, you have the recruiting. Everything is, is narrowed down to a science. It's not so much that way, you know, for HBCUs. You know, and Hugh, he loves coaching. Like you say, you still want to coach. Yeah. You know, and he wants to get back in coaching. And I don't think that it's a, a fair shuffle of the deck when it involves black coaches. I, I just got to say. I agree you know, 100%. with those opportunities. And, and I think Hugh can coach in the NFL. Much like I think you should still be an NFL coach in the NFL. And, you know, Jacksonville, they have a, there's no, be a straight, spot But be, be straight up. I'm any, being straight any, up. Like a... 
I'm being straight up. A, a, a white coach that coaches that long at one place, when he leaves, they he gets he gets an opportunity. Fall, the apple doesn't yeah, fall He gets an opportunity the right there. There are, there, there are times where they get to fail up. Right, right back in it. One hundred percent. And that's just the way it goes. But you know, this is really about Hugh and his challenges. But the fact that he loves coaches and he loves these. Right. He loves coaching, and he loves these kids. We had that conversation last year before we went to Tennessee State. I said, bro, you're doing this because you're showing people you just want to coach. Yes. Bingo. That's why you're doing it. Real talk. Right. And, and this year when another university reached out to him, reached out to me and asked me if he might be interested, I said, well, I don't know that, but you got to ask him. And then the Gramley State job came about as well. And I said, that's the thing, but you got to make that determination. And in my opinion, like you said, friend, I don't think it's fair. Right. So – I meet Hugh Jackson. He's a graduate assistant at Pacific College. I coach against Hugh Jackson. He was a quarterback at Pacific. Okay. All right. I know when him when he's a running back coach at USC, you know, and I'm going there in, in 1996, 97 before the draft when they got uh, Daryl, uh, uh, the big defensive lineman coming out from there, and I'm there. You know, when I'm with the Ravens, and I'm there. And then later on, I watch him coach the running backs with the Washington Redskins, Stephen. And, and the dudes he had there and how he handled that room. Right. And then Coach promotes him, uh, Coach Spurrier promotes him the next year, but then the Coach Spurrier is gone, and I bring him to Cincinnati, right. coaching the receiver. Chad, TJ, Chris Hanner, these guys, and help them not only as players, but grow as men. As, as men. Being able to have that type of relationship yes. that allows you Which to do he that. Had that with the guys in Washington. I watched this from afar because I'm there, you know, just grinding, doing my thing. And he, I'm watching how he's coaching and handling these kids on the other side of the ball in that running back room and so forth. And then, you know, he leaves me to go to Atlanta, be a coordinator, mm -hmm. okay, with Coach Petrino. That doesn't go. He ends up in Baltimore, quarterback coach with Flacco. Mm -hmm. right. Flacco's a rookie. Right. Started That's start tough. a rookie quarterback. That's yep. tough. All right. They go to playoffs. Two years there. Come to Oakland. Mm -hmm. All right. Be the OC. And then next year be the head coach. Right. Beat every division team, go eight and eight, and lose your job. Lose your job. And Cole, how do you feel about and and the race thing? Something because you you know we tight with you, yeah. you know and that Herm yourself, you. I know y'all all tight and y'all you know watch out for each other. But just these these young coaches that get these jobs over a vet that's been doing this forty years. Fred just did the math, forty years, and not even taking shots at anybody. Brandon Staley. Dan Campbell, Urban Meyer's goofy ass, dude just got fired. <laughs> like, I don't even hear about Herm, you know, <laughs> you, uh, 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 Marvin has said, but like these young. He can't help himself. I can't help I myself. I apologize that's for why, that. That's why he told you earlier, you know, I got to let you know. That's why I let you but, class him up a little but, bit, coach. But, coach, these veteran coaches that know, that's done it, has been to the playoffs, what, seven, eight times? Yeah, seven in, times. In your venture, you know, seven times. And they hire these young, you know, these young genius football analytical minds. How do you feel about that old vet coach yourself versus these young guys that they're trying to figure out if they know something? Well, bring, in, bring in a guy that knows it, not a guy that you can figure out yeah. if he knows it. Don't say old. Say experience. Because that's, like yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, soft. that's what it is. You're, you're going to be better your next time around. Even and in 16 years, we had to reinvent. I, I don't know how many times. Mm -hmm. We had to reinvent, restart. And, and do things because you can't be the same. You got to change. You got to change with the times. We had to learn how to to train them different. We had to train, learn how to feed them different right. because the colleges are doing it that way. Right. So we had to do that. I mean, when 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 uh, API started back in in, yeah. in Scottsdale, yeah. I'm at API in 04 yeah. trying to figure out how they're doing because everybody wants to doesn't want to come to the offseason workout. They want to go there. They want to go to these right. places. Right. And so we had to change and train the guys like they do because that was what they wanted to be like. And then Luke ended up, you know, in Jacksonville after right, that. So right. you have to adjust and change. And, that, and that's the thing. You, should I, and I had to, I bring you back. He coaches on defense. When we draft Drake or Patrick, right. he was coaching the secondary when Mike Zimmer is a coordinator. He's helping coach the cornerbacks. You know, I think people don't understand that like coaches like coaches bounce around coach. and, and try to coach. Gil Brandt told that a long time ago. Coaches can coach. Right. right. Coaches can, because they can teach. You're a master teacher. Bill Walsh, when he started the fellowship program, that's what he talked to me about when he brought me in for an interview, about how he hired college coaches because he felt they were master teachers. Mm -hmm. And because they had to reach down and they had to bring it out of the players or else we don't got a job. Right. Could you mention like reinventing yourself uh, since you were there 16 years and having to understand 
culture changes and, and, and the way training was changing. You know, this show is called The Pivot, and we all kind of talk about different things in life that made us transition, made us change, made, made us look at things different ways. Throughout your career or your life, what do you think was the most difficult pivot uh, for you to make? I think every year you adjust, but I think that I had to make a transition on offense because I felt like we weren't getting the young player immersed in the offense quick enough. Okay. And so I, I did a lot of research. I talked to my friends. You know, I talked to uh, Dirk Cutter. I talked to Andy Reid. Uh, talked to guys on offense, Mike Shepard, who was one of my co guys, about what kind of offense. And he said, well, we, you probably should go to this kind of system. So then I started researching. I Brad, Brad, Brad Childress in and we talked. And that's when I ended up hiring, uh, uh, and John Gruden, John did a Monday, we had a Monday night game against the Steelers, actually. Mm -hmm. So John would always come in early. Mm -hmm. So we spent the day together on Sunday. Mm -hmm. We're in there watching tape and doing this, and he's giving me his analysis and everything. And so literally, I, I'm bouncing ideas off these guys, and that's when I ended up hiring Jay Gruden. I got you. And I thought that was a big change for me because I had to let go of a coach that I've been friends with since 1982 when I got into coaching. And I helped him get a job. Wow. He was there in Cincinnati when I got the job, and I, I kept him there. You know, and, and these are your friends. And, and like my, my boss, Mike Brown, you saw us tell me, Marvin, these are good people. I said, Coach, Mike, so are the rest of these people. Right. They're all right. good. <laughs> right. About yeah, winning. Yeah. That's right. No. And, 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 you know, and, and, and I believe that about, you know, it was my job as the coach to always help the coaches as much as I can because you hate to have to change a coach. Right. You know, and I always felt it was my failure when I had to make a change with coaches because I didn't do a good enough job bringing enough out of them the right way. And I think that's the, that's the biggest uh, thing as a head coach is you got to do it because you're responsible for everybody. And right. not only, I mean, it, it's in the building. I mean, because sometimes when, when the head coach is gone, shoot, they might get the equipment staff, they might get the video staff, no, they might get the everybody. everybody. I mean, they might get everybody. Yeah. And so everybody's hanging on you. And so, you know, you owe it to everybody to have that opportunity to, to be successful. Have you gotten any calls? I haven't gotten calls this year. You know, I spoke with three teams last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this last week they might have won two games. So I think they're up to eight collectively for the three. Wow. But, you know, I mean, that's the thing. It's, it's you, know, uh, you know, people make decisions, and I see that. They're going to make decisions the way they want to make decisions. Right. But, but I, I really uh, want to coach. Uh, you know, I enjoy what I do. I enjoy working. Uh, with these young people and I enjoy also working with the coaches. Mm -hmm. I want to help coaches. Right. I mean that's part of you know why I'm doing this too is, is I want to help coaches move forward and be able to reach their goals yeah. you know that, that I was able to and, and I was blessed to have good coaches that became head coaches. And coach what's, what's the all of us are retired now. The entire league 32 teams told all of us you're Can't not good it. enough anymore. Yeah, yeah. We don't they, want you they, to play They retired. Savior. I ain't retired. Fred, For me, it's a career answer. change. Fred, you 58 now, look, years old, Fred. <laughs> if, this is, if, if this is what hey. retirement feels like, I ain't never retired. Hey, it's a career, already, it's a career too, change. And you already know for him, though, like, dude think he can still play. Like, nah, Fred has, Fred has never play. told a story about his career where he lost. Like, every time I hear him tell, he's never like, man, yeah, that guy got me. Or, yeah, this happened and, you know, I was playing against Marv's defense and they did a great job. Fred 280 and 0 in his mind. Nah, nah, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. The point I'm trying to make is, for me, it's been a career change. I left the NFL at 35. Ain't no fucking way I'm retired. I'm not retired. This is fucking work. But, but, We're having a conversation, but, but, but this is work. This is not work. Football. This is work. We talk about football, yeah, Fred. I don't care about all that. Fred, I'm talking... Yo, I don't like that yo, word. But, but, <laughs> oh, but coach, when do coaches age out? Because my knees, my knees were shot. You know what I'm saying? Something happens. Like, I started having knee surgery. Do, does a coach age out? I think when you, when, when you don't look forward to the grind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. When you don't look forward to the grind, you're like it's People like my mom. That. You know, mom said, "Do you have to go in today?" When I call her, you know, she, were you at work? I said, "Mom, I, I go in because we this is what we do." Yeah. You know, there's not a have to. This is a want to. I was in there, you know, making sure we were set for the walk. That's what you do. That's what we do. And uh, when you don't want to do that anymore, when you don't wake up at 4:30 and go to work, you know, that's when you know that, that, that it's over. That's a perfect segue into. 
you know what I want to say because before we started, we talking about this one kid that that's just frivolously misplacing or mishandling two hundred and eighty five dollars. Right? Yeah, that's but that is we, we always talk about the grind and motivation, and and Jordan Clark, Ryan's son, right? His dad is one of the faces of ESPN and everything else. He's amazing at what he does. He's a great safety for the Pittsburgh Steelers, right? He used to try to prick his brain. Just hey, study. Right. Oh, right. Just, please, let home no, pretty quick. No, please tell this story. Hey, tell him. He used to act like I couldn't play, Mar. We heard this story all morning that you used to come up to RC after the game saying, what did you see on the run? I'm trying to what figure out why he could be at the line of scrimmage on this play and be in the deep center on Bingo. this play. We, I run the tape back for hours. <laughs> I'm telling you, hours. Right. I had that's nothing so, to figure it out, Jordan. That's, that's, hey. that's, 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 that's the point I'm trying to get to. You talk about the grind. You got to be in it. You got to love it. But here's a kid who's had, or it seems that he had everything gifted to him. People that are on the outside look it in, they're saying, your dad does this, your dad does that. Why? Why are you here? You know, does he love Does Fred, he love Fred, the game? He's a he trust does. fund baby. I call him trust fund baby. No, Correct. But, but, but that's, you know. And we can ask him that when he comes you know, on. Our, our does he love Our the children game? can't, they can't control who they're born to. And we all aspire to do for, for do more our for children our yeah. what, more better than what we had. We want them to earn it, understand it, and appreciate it. Just like my dad did. My dad worked in the steel mill for 30 years. And he used to tell me, you got to be twice as good, and I don't want you in here. So I spent nine weeks in there. I was good. <laughs> and you realized that wasn't your job. The only day I could stay awake was payday. <laughs> the only day I went home, I could stay awake was payday. But I knew that wasn't going to be my job. Right. But, like, with, with Jordan, uh, he's blessed. He, but he's motivated and he's pushed. Right. And that's the other part of it, you know. And, and that's the thing that, you know, we got, you know, in our program three or four guys yeah. who come from the legacy like that. And, and it's something to see because we know they know what there's out there, but they also watch how their daddies worked and grinded to get to where they got. Correct. And they're appreciative of that. And, and it's coach, not easy. How, how long does it take for you? Not just not just, you know, Jordan, you know, not just all the, the legacy players. How long does it take you to look at a kid and know if he got that, if he if he has that grind, if he got that love? Oh, I don't think it takes very I mean, I think it comes quickly. I really work out. Do you, you have to see him practice? It, 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 well, it's it's more how they carry themselves through meetings mm -hmm. and, and off the field, you know, and their practice habits will, will show free. And we got to learn, you know, you got to teach guys practice habits. But it's the other part of it that, that, you know, that they're carrying the torch for because they know how to do that. They've been taught the right way of how to do that. And, and they understand football comes easy to them. They can speak the language, you know. They can, you can correct them. Instantly, they got you, you know. Yeah. Now, he, I think he was growing up in a military family because, oh, yes, sir. Everything, yes, sir. Yeah, he is so <laughs> humble. He is, I've, I've just met him. He's the most humble kid that I probably ever met in my yeah, life. Yeah. That, was, that was the and mom, be, though. Before he comes on, what's the difference between a five-star recruit and a three-star dog? The, these stars stuff, man. It don't matter. It don't matter. Because, it don't matter, right? Because someone that doesn't really know the it, game is well, giving yeah. out the star. That's that is passing out the it, star. That star it, I mean, it, it's, it, it's like that's it, what I want to hear. You know, it's like when you put the draft up, you evaluate everybody in the draft. There ain't no stars, right. right? You know, you you draft them and you evaluate them all the way through. But but it's you. It's not some other person in, in some other part of the world or country or whatever saying this guy's a five star, man. Right. I mean, it, it's about playing. And, and I think we talked about this earlier when you talked about, Shane, about, you know, the 17, 18 year old. And where's he going to be at 2021? 20, because that's what we want to see. 100%. That's what we're trying to look right. for, you know. We, back when I was coaching in college before, the 11 years before I came to the NFL, you know, you want to see and take that guy through to where he's going to be in three years. What we've always talked about, we always try to give back through our experiences, our, you know, uh, whatever we've gone through, our conversations. And a lot of these kids, they don't necessarily understand it now, right? And they get these these ratings from these publications that just handing out any thing, right? Because they have to find a way to make money, that's like all. anything else. But, that's all. but these kids get this; they get discouraged. Yeah, but the other part is too. Five star. The other part too, though. Like that's on that's on us, though. Like, but that's that, that's that, the that, reason yeah, why yeah, I want yeah, to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, that's on us. You as know, parents, today, though. But you're hearing it from a coach yeah. who has fifty. 
40 decades of coaching experience, not just on a collegiate lab, level, yeah, yeah. but even in the NFL. Now he's back on the college know, level. But 50, 40 he, decades is a very long 40 time. 40 decades is 400 years. <laughs> hey, that's a really long time. <laughs> hey, I'm on my 55, 50 right now. You done put in some work, coach. I admit. Hey, listen, I fuck Joe. I, I fuck yeah. hey, but that was I know numbers. But I'm in the moment right now. Yeah, when he was in high school though, and we were kind of talking about, we were talking about this story earlier. He, you know, he came, he comes up to me. He's like, Dad, I want to play college ball. And at the time, he was playing basketball. He was playing football. I was like, We ain't gonna be tall enough to play basketball. I was like, I'm letting you know. And so we, I was like, and I've watched you catch, you know. And I was like, Though you could be a great high school receiver because you could just catch, uh, chess catch everything, that ain't gonna be what you do. I was like, I can help you play DB. I was like, So if you really want it, then we could get it. And I remember, so he broke his ankle, and we, he, come, he comes he's coming back from his ankle, and we would go work out, man. We'd be in the gym three hours, and he would cry, right? The times I threw footballs at his head, you know what I mean? And it was like these- At his, at his head? Yeah. At my head, coach. At his head, yeah. coach. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm you know, and like, and like I would always tell him, though, no, you can quit. I was like, I got like, your college is paid for, you know? I said, I saved a ton of money. I said, and I will work, I will work my ass off to make sure you have a head start in life to be a successful human. I said, because that's my job. It's not my job to get you to college, to play football. And I, but you can ask him. I was like, dog, you can quit. Just choose one. You know what I'm saying? Do you think that, when the coach is talking about being motivated, being pushed, now do you do those things by yourself? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, just those experiences, like breaking my ankle and, you know what I'm saying, just growing up with you as a pops, you know what I'm saying? It's just. I approach it differently than I think a lot of other kids do. Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of the things that uh, Coach Marvin and Coach Herm harp on now are things that you started to tell me when I was younger. Like when I was a freshman in high school, talking about running to the ball in practice and making sure you finish on the camera or having a notebook out, having a pen always, or being the last person in the facility, making sure people see you. That's stuff that I keep with me even now today. There's a mindset that, that comes with doing what I want to do what y'all have done. And there's a mindset that comes with that. There's inherent sacrifices that you have to make to do that. You have to be, to be elite, you have to have elite habits. Damn. So I definitely think that. Uh, Hold up, time out, time out, <laughs> time out. You taught him that? No, I never said that one. I'm going to use it though now. <laughs> but that one wasn't mine. You ain't going to get up on Monday though. Hold up. <laughs> Yeah, that might have been that might have been from over there. It, I it, that, it, it, it that, really doesn't matter. That right? wasn't my <laughs> at the end of the day. But how old are you? Uh, twenty. Twenty? Yes, sir. You don't hear you don't hear him talking like that. No. I didn't talk like that. I mean, not until I was probably, I don't know, thirty. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's a testament to your, your parent, your father. Well, I think you the, know, the, and everything that he's he, the, he's done. The other does. piece of it, the other piece of it for me, is that. In 13 years of playing in the NFL, I, I was never not undrafted, even though that's a double negative. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I never had a day in my life where I felt like people wanted me. When Coach Marv would come up to me, he'd have that conversation with me or talk about, like, those are the things that got me excited. Because I felt like I was always fighting for the approval. Like, I wanted people to look at me and be like, he could ball, but I wanted to be y'all. I didn't care right. if it was Pro Bowls and all that stuff. I wanted y'all to be like, Dude can play, and I think because I was like that, I always talk to him that way. People ain't gonna give you stuff. Like people aren't going to expect or accept you just because of your last name. Like you gotta go earn it. And then when you, you know, when he gets to ASU and it's AP there and it's Herm there, and then Marv Marv comes, like you can ask him now. We don't have those conversations no more. You know what I'm saying? Like I used to watch every single practice when he was young, freshman year, and I would call him. Like his. His first year playing in the games, like his first game, I graded 92 plays. You hard. know what I'm saying? He graded them hard. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a question that I had for him because my son played at Florida, wore 21, the whole thing. So I've been through this and I would sit in the stands. I wanted to be in the stadium as a fan. And I would just sit there. All of the fans knew me. So I would just sit there and just critique him. You know, we have our conversations at the end of the game. I didn't rah rah, get up, yell. You know, he do something good, I sat there. He did something bad, I was pissed off on the inside. Like, <laughs> Come on, bro, you know this. <laughs> How's your dad when he's at the game? Like, has anyone ever told? I know you can't see him in the stands. Oh, yes, he can. 
You she can. Last. <laughs> I'll try. I'll try if I can. Oh yeah. Hey. Yeah. So how how is he? Um. The same critique, like oh, yeah. does he over critique or is it? No, nah, he doesn't over critique. Okay. Not not now. In high school, like legitimately, like we would get off the field from a drive, and my my DC will be talking, and I sit there. And as soon as he was done, he's like, all right, you go talk to your dad now. And I'll walk to the fence and start okay. talking to my father about whatever was happening. So happened. who'd you pay more attention to? To your DC or to your dad? Because he's uh, been on the, the highest level. It was, I think it was a mix of both. Because okay. obviously you have to play within the defense. It's right. a team game. I can't just freelance or anything right, like that. Right, right. But uh, the things that me and my dad worked on were the things that would make me the best at what we were doing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Whether that was cover three or cover one or whatever. I just wanted to know what I was doing wrong, what I could do better to help my team win. And right. he obviously is one of the best people, to, you know, to give me and, that direction. And, and, I'm you know, a nice one though. You, oh yeah, yo, yeah, yeah. Your mom, your mom, your mom's the dog. Hey, I'm yeah. a nice one though. He's the, he's the, I heard, I heard that he's the. He's Bro, the it would be, it would be times I would tell her, I'd be like, you can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> like front row, we were playing a state championship game. A kid caught a comeback on me for a first down. It's like the fourth quarter, and I'm hot. I'm mad at myself. Yeah. My mom screamed from the stands, cover somebody. <laughs> like, like, dang, so, so she's the toughest. Absolutely. I don't want to have to use that. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, cover somebody. Yeah. So, you go tighten so, him up. so he was a pushover. No, not at all. Oh, no. Yo, nah. y'all been like, bro, like y'all been doing that a lot though, man. Nah, There's been man. a lot of like <laughs> RC soft. You a pleasant human. I'm, I, I am a pleasant human. But it's because like I understand, like I understand time and place. You see what I'm saying? And I had already put a instilled enough in him to know that I ain't gotta do all that. You know what I mean? And like that's the cool part now though, is when he calls me after the game, it's not me telling him what I saw, it's him telling me what happened. It's him being like, yeah, Pop, on this one, I should have shaded a little bit more outside. Or it's like when I when I see him give up a, a, a catch, I'm like, well, what happened? And he was like, well, on film, Pop, and every time number three went inside, number two was following. He was like, so I was going to pick off the angle. And I was like, well, you can't beat him. I was like, in understanding what you're getting, you can anticipate it, but you can't play it until it happens. But he can tell me, like, I have those conversations. And, like, most of the times, I just shoot him a text like, bro, you good? And he's like, yeah, it was a good day. Or, you know, he's actually hard on himself sometimes that he needed to be. And he's like, nah, Pop, it was a shitty day. Like, I ain't going to never play. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, get it. I, I want, Joe, and I want to ask you, because I said it earlier to coach, that I'll use a trust fund, baby. Yeah. You good. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you drive, but I'm sure it ain't no Toyota Paseo. What you drive? What you drive, Joe? What you drive? You know what I'm saying? Jaguar XC. You, 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 you drive a Jag. A Jaguar? Jaguar. <laughs> my, my son drive, drive a Jaguar too. Jaguar, <laughs> exactly, man. I had a Toyota Paseo with 117,000 miles on it when we bought it. I had to put oil, I, coat, coat. I had to put oil in it once a day. Hey, and my boy <laughs> was beating, beating, the, beating up something in the damn engine. But what, what does that do? Because we have kids. Fred, Freddie been through. My kids are young. My, my, my oldest is uh, 10. But what does that do to you? Is that like? Does that put pressure on you? Does it motivate? Like, what does that do when people say, and I tell you what people say, when you're on the field, if I didn't know and I'm sitting up there watching you play now, oh, that's Ryan Clark's son. What does that do to you mentally? Do you try to prove something? Do you try to run from it? Like, you're Ryan Clark's son in people's minds. You ever feel like you're in the shadows? Uh, no, not really. You know, I love my father. He's a great man. I'm, I'm cool being associated with him. Uh, more so to me, it motivates me because that name, like, that means something. Like, you know what I'm saying? That name on the back of my jersey, that means something. When people line up against me, they trying to like do me in to prove like that they're like that. You know right. what I'm saying? And it's my job. Like when you standing across from me, like bro, I'm finna like I'm finna dog you in front of all these people. Like you know what I'm saying? Cause it means something to me. My name means something to me in the sport of football. Like I love it. Like this is what I want to do my entire life. You mentioned names. I got four names for you: Troy Palmalu, Ed Reed, mm -hmm. Sean Taylor, Ryan Clark. Mm -hmm. Rank them for me. You're going to do that to him, Freddie? I mean, we on the show. You're going to do that we, to him, Freddie? We're having a conversation. Well, here's the thing. Those rankings, if I had to guess, those rankings are going to go like mine. So he can actually just tell the I truth. Just, I, he's an amazing yeah. kid. I just yeah. met him. Uh, yeah. Dang, and I, I appreciate that. And, and, and for, for, what it, you know, for what it is. My favorite player of the four is Ryan Clark. Right. But uh, Sean Taylor, mm -hmm. Troy Palomalu, Harry Ryan Clark. That's my four. 
I'm Sean in love with this kid, man. They're good, bro. Hmm? You were banging. You put I Sean wish. first, you were banging. Like, I wish Sean I could do a banger that. now. I wish I could do that. Oh, okay. sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. And man, you know, I think, and for him, you know, growing up, like, I've had, I have, like, a lot of moments with him that are great moments. Like, when we was at the Super Bowl, he got to break us down every Saturday. Because I would bring him to every Saturday walkthrough with me. Because, you know, we worked a ton, and I just wanted to spend time with him. So I'd bring him to Saturday walkthrough. During the, at the wild card, I mean, at the wild card game, the first playoff game, Coach T was like, Jordan, break us down. And we won. So the next week, same thing. Right. We get to the Super Bowl. Because Jordan would come every Saturday, Coach T let everybody bring a family member. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to bring a family member. And the, the picture in the middle of, like, the little book they made for us is us lifting him up after he broke us down. And so I would say, like, the other thing, you know, asking that question about Sean, you know, we talked about it. And... Shannon called me sickly, but I got really sick at the sickle cell crisis in Denver, and I got out of the hospital. Sean had got shot, and I was, I was on the stairs the morning I found out. And he walks up to me, he's a baby, like if that was what, 07? You know, Jordan was six maybe, uh, seven years old, and he was just like, pop. And he's like, what happened to Uncle Sean? And so like when you ask about those people, like that's just family. Right. You know, I went to see Troy this summer, and Troy has a picture of like all of us, like I'm on the wall, all these people he played with, all his cousins that play ball, and Jordan's on his wall in his ASU uniform. And I think that like that's the, obviously when you have a kid at the age I had Jordan, like that's not the plan. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not an ideal situation, but he got to grow up with me, you know, in the league to where like I didn't have him afterwards. Like he knows who his dad was as a player, he knows how I worked, you know, he knows how all his uncles, his uncles were. And I think that's the one thing, you know, and I'm sure Marv and y'all agree with this, like when you grow up around the atmosphere, it's different. Like you don't actually have to like tell him, you know right. what I'm saying? Like he got to see it, mm -hmm. you know? We had conversations, I think once before, you know, about <clears throat> the parents and, you know, them forcing their kids into these sports, Pop Warner, youth sports. And uh, you mentioned earlier, you didn't have to do that with Jordan. Yeah, I just... You know, he just, you know, you introduced him to the arena. Yeah, we like, talk about exposure leads to expansion. You just exposed him. Yeah, I was just like, hey, but, man, you can play what you want. Like, I let him play everything. Like, I think I still think it's the best sport is soccer. I tried to get him to play soccer in high school and everything, and he just didn't want to do it. But the way I want to end it, man, is if a team is, is looking for a coach, what would be your greatest endorsement of yourself? I think the, the, I've been in a lab for the last three years. You know, I really felt like, uh, you know, football's changed. Uh, when, when I had to take over the defense in 2018, it had changed a lot since I had last called a defense. I'm going to tell you that yeah. in the NFL. And, you know, he had the communicator. And I told somebody, I had this communicator back in the day, man. Right. <laughs> it would be damn good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It would have been a lot better. You know, right. if I could have told Ray what's about to happen, come on, man. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but... Uh, but I think being back in college, because the transition of what college the quarterbacks are doing in the National Football League right now is coming out of college. Yep. You know, there's not going to be that stationary pocket pass. There's not going to be in the National Football League. No, sir. Very many places. It might be out of two out of 32. Right. But the other are going to be on the move where they can, they can advance the ball. They can make some first downs by three or four times a game where they're going to carry the football, whether it be on a read or just pulling the ball down and going and making a first down and give me an opportunity to score points. And I think that's the biggest transition we're going through right now mm -hmm. in football. And if you're in the college game, you, you gotta defend it. it every week. Yeah. You gotta figure out how to defend it. This is 11 on 11 football. Right. And coach, you called out Jordan Fred, I had to call you out coach. Are you one of the top 32 defensive minds in the world? Well. <laughs> no, I, don't get me I, politically I, correct I, coach. I, I, I want I, to get I, after you know, 32 teams. I tell this all the time. All I want to do is get my dudes on the sideline drinking Gatorade without the other team scoring. That's all I cared about. You know, I didn't care about nothing else. And, and, and that's why we do what we do. You're very humble. You're always smiling. He <laughs> is always cheesy, dog. <laughs> and, and, you know, a lot of times these owner, this perception that stands out in front of you. And, um, and I think if you ever had another opportunity to interview, I think the owners should really dig into what you stand for as a person, your integrity, your character, your makeup, how you develop young men. And, and I think in this environment, that, that carries a lot of weight, you know, 
And I'm rooting for you. I do hope you get another opportunity to get in there and interview and uh, get another shot at it. You belong in the NFL, not simply because you can coach, but because it, it's more than that. You know, we're talking about lives. You know, when guys are done with the game, they have to know which way to go. That transition is tougher than being a player because that's what we know what to do when we're, you know, playing. We, we know how to play football. Yeah. How do you prepare these guys for when it's all over? That's what you're doing with these young men like Jordan, and that's what you can do with the old men and adults like <laughs> ourselves. You know what I'm saying? The, unreti the unretired 45-year-old. 40, so I, I, think that, I think the owners need to look at that. They really need to look at that and stop just, you said it, stop running to the young hype, you know, the young hottie. You know what I'm saying? If I can try and draw a parallel, yeah. it ain't the young hottie might not, her hygiene might not be up to oh, par. Oh my God. You feel me? Bro? About the hygiene coach. I'm just trying to draw a parallel. <laughs> that was deep. <laughs> that was deep. Not just X, not just X and no, you need the full pack. You need the whole pack. And coach, coach a bad one. Bro, coach he, a basically, full he basically just said Somebody she might that stink. Cares. That's what he said. She might stink and the show's over. That's you want experience, we're done. baby. He you said she's she gonna coach. be fine, but she might stink. Appreciate you, baby. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, my dog. Love you, boy. The boy said cool. she stink, you. man. Hold up. Limitless. Take a stomach cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up. Uh, on the mission, get me up. Uh, knowing me, I got the key. Uh, on the vision, I can trust. Uh, trust. Uh, limitless. Nigga, send me cap, pin in it. I thought they here to witness it. Got my people feeling militant. Way I'm feeling, get me up.